It is a dry morning in Ouagadougou. Dust clings to the old road, where a motorbike from the 1990s, a rugged, familiar P-50, glides forward. But something is different. There is no growl of an engine, no black smoke rising from the tailpipe. The bike moves in silence, powered not by gasoline, but by electricity and by the ambition of a nation that refuses to wait for foreign solutions. What happens when a country, often dismissed as poor and dependent, begins to invent its own answers? This is not a story about a high-tech factory in Europe or a billion-dollar electric car rollout in California. This is the story of a Burkina Bay workshop, a forgotten bike, and a new revolution that is not just environmental, it is political, economic, and deeply symbolic. For decades, Burkina Faso has relied on imported fuel, motorbikes. Especially older models like the P-50 have been the workhorses of daily life. They carry children to school, goods to the market, and workers to their jobs. But rising fuel prices, supply shortages, and growing pollution have turned mobility into a burden. In a country where the average income is among the lowest in the world, even commuting can cost more than a family can afford. In Tudai 22, during one of the worst gasoline shortages in recent memory, an electrical engineer named Amadou Abore asked a simple but radical question, why throw away what we already have, when we can transform it? He began converting old P-50 motorbikes into electric vehicles quiet, clean, and affordable. With only 200 CFA francs, about 36 U.S., since his electric P-50 could travel 60 kilometers. The same trip on a gasoline-powered bike would cost over $3. This idea, born from necessity, became more than just a technical fix. It became a reflection of something larger, the political and philosophical vision of Burkina Faso's new leader, Captain Ibrahim Traoré. From the beginning of his leadership, Traoré has championed a model of industrial sovereignty. We must produce what we consume and consume what we produce, he declared. For him, true independence means being able to build, repair, and power one's country without begging for aid or importing every solution. The P-50 electric conversion is not a headline in a Western journal. It is not a glossy government program. It is a practical, scalable, people-powered innovation, one that aligns directly with Traoré's call for local industry and technological independence. It is a perfect expression of the Burkina Bay spirit, resourceful, resilient, and revolutionary. By the end of this story, you will see how a dusty old bike from the 1990s became a symbol of modern African self-reliance, and you will understand why. In the heart of the Sahel, Burkina Faso is no longer waiting for the world to catch up. To understand the true impact of the electric P-50 motorbike, we must look beyond ideology and into the heart of the machine. The conversion of a gasoline-powered motorcycle into an electric vehicle is not a minor adjustment. It is a radical redesign built on both necessity and ingenuity. And in Burkina Faso, it is being done with tools talent, and tenacity that most outside the region would never expect. At the core of the transformation is the replacement of the internal combustion engine with a compact electric motor. This motor is connected to a battery pack either lithium-ion or lead-acid, depending on availability and budget. A controller manages the power flow and throttle response. What used to be a smoke-belching fuel-dependent machine is now clean, quiet, and efficient. Charging the electric P-50 is remarkably simple. From a fully depleted state, the battery can be recharged in just four hours using a standard household outlet. For riders who only need to top up after short trips, 30 to 60 minutes of charging is often enough. The entire charging process costs only 200 CFA francs, about 36 cents in U.S., currency, and delivers 60 kilometers of range. That is roughly 37 miles, or the distance between downtown Detroit and Ann Arbor, 
on less than the cost of a cup of coffee. This is not theoretical. This is daily life in Ouagadougou. Riders glide silently through neighborhoods, bypassing fuel stations and repair shops alike. The electric P-50 requires no oil changes. Fewer moving parts mean lower maintenance, and the ride is smoother. Even the noise is gone a transformation as emotional as it is technical. What makes this project even more extraordinary is the way it blends old and new. The frame of the motorbike, the bones of the P-50, remains the same. It is repurposed, cleaned, and adapted to hold new components. Wheels, suspension, and handlebars are often reused. This is not just about saving money. It is about creating a circular economy where waste becomes resource. And while some of the core components like batteries or motors are currently imported, the rest is assembled by Burkina Bay hands in Burkina Bay workshops, with time, training, and investment. Even more of the supply chain can shift locally. The dream is not just to convert a few bikes, but to create a new industry, one powered by local mechanics, trained youth, and regional pride. This is where the genius of the project lies. It is not merely a product, it is a process that can be taught, scaled, and adapted. In Ghana, startups like Solar Taxi are building similar solutions, and in Nigeria, initiatives like Max EV are electrifying urban mobility. But Burkina Faso's approach is special. It starts not with factories, but with familiarity with what people already know, already ride, and already trust. The P-50 is not just a bike. It is a symbol, a memory, and now, a bridge to the future. This blend of practicality and patriotism fits squarely within the philosophy of President Traoré. His vision of technological sovereignty calls not for imported blueprints, but for local adaptation. The electric P-50 project is not an exception to his strategy. It is the embodiment of it. Innovation does not need to be imported. It can be built on a dusty roadside, with old tools and new purpose. And that is exactly what is happening in Burkina Faso today. The transformation of the P-50 into an electric motorbike is not just a technical marvel. It is a breakthrough in economic survival for everyday people. In Burkina Faso, where the average worker earns less than three U.S. dollars per day. Saving a single dollar matters. And when the switch to electric mobility saves hundreds of dollars each year, the impact is more than personal, it is national. Let us break it down. Charging an electric P-50 costs about 200 CFA francs or 36 U.S. cents and delivers 60 kilometers of travel a gasoline-powered bike to cover the same distance, typically requires two liters of fuel. At nearly 900 CFA francs per liter, that is about $3.2 per trip. The savings nearly $3 for every 60 kilometers. Now imagine this over a year. A typical motorbike rider in Burkina Faso travels about 6,000 kilometers annually. Multiply that by the savings per trip and you get approximately 260 U.S. dollars saved every year. That is equivalent to two months of food, school supplies for a child, or even seed capital to start a small business. These numbers are not just economic theory. They represent freedom. For many Burkina Bay families, daily transportation costs eat into wages meant for food, medicine, and education. The electric P-50 is more than a machine, it is a tool for reclaiming dignity and security. But the benefits do not stop with individual riders. This movement is sparking a wave of new local opportunities. Mechanics who once specialized in gasoline engines are now learning how to install batteries, diagnose electric motors, and repair control units. Small workshops are popping up to handle conversions, supported by informal training networks. Youth who once struggled to find work are discovering new trades in electric mobility. This local ecosystem is growing with every bike that is converted. As more riders make the switch, more technicians are needed. More demand for parts, some of which can be built locally, emerges. 
the economy begins to circulate inward instead of leaking outward through fuel imports and foreign-made motorcycles. Let us not forget the national implications. Burkina Faso spends a significant portion of its budget on fuel imports. Every liter not burned is money saved. Every rider who converts to electric is participating in a quiet revolution against dependence. And, unlike aid programs or foreign-funded infrastructure projects, this revolution is led from within, by Burkina Bay hands and minds. There is also a sense of pride that comes with riding a machine made by local people, for local needs, using local knowledge. It is not about luxury, it is about relevance. The electric P-50 is rugged enough for unpaved roads, strong enough to carry goods to market, and simple enough to repair in a neighborhood shop. It is, quite literally, the people's vehicle. This project also aligns with the broader economic vision of President Ibrahim Traoré, who has emphasized industrial self-reliance and technological dignity. In his words, Africa cannot develop with foreign tools alone. The P-50 project is the local answer to that call. As one Burkina Bay writer said, I used to spend half my weekly income just on fuel. Now, I ride for less than a dollar a week. Multiply that by thousands. And you do not just get economic relief, you get a movement. The electric P-50 is not only transforming how people move it, is changing the air they breathe, the waste they create, and the way they think about national priorities. While often overlooked in global discussions, Burkina Faso is crafting a green model that is practical, affordable, and rooted in its own soil. The environmental benefits of converting old P-50 motorbikes into electric vehicles are immediate and measurable. Gasoline-powered two-wheelers contribute to over 50% of urban CO2 emissions in cities like Ouagadougou. They are also responsible for the bulk of airborne pollutants that worsen asthma, heart disease, and respiratory infections. By contrast, an electric motorbike produces zero tailpipe emissions and operates silently removing both smog and noise from congested streets. According to studies in the Sahel region, switching from gasoline to electric for two- and three-wheelers can reduce CO2 emissions by approximately 30% per kilometer. This is no small achievement in a country where the vast majority of vehicles are motorbikes. Every old P-50 converted to electric becomes a small but powerful force in the fight against climate degradation. But perhaps more revolutionary is the way this project turns waste into wealth. Rather than scrapping broken-down bikes, Burkina Bay mechanics are repurposing them. Frames are reused, parts are salvaged, and the vehicles are reborn. This is not just environmental policy, it is a form of circular economics— Nothing is wasted. Everything is reimagined. Powering these bikes, of course, requires electricity. And that is where national policy becomes critical. Burkina Faso is taking bold steps. In 2024, the government launched a national electrification plan aimed at raising rural access to electricity from just 5% to 50% by 2028. The total investment, 625 billion CFA francs, equivalent to about 1.12 billion U.S. dollars. This is not foreign aid. It is domestic commitment. In parallel, solar energy is becoming a national priority. Projects like the Kodeni Solar Plant 38 megawatts are helping to reduce reliance on imported electricity, which still accounts for about 60% of the country's supply. With more solar power feeding into the grid, the dream of solar-charged motorbikes becomes not only feasible, but strategic. This push toward renewable energy aligns perfectly with the rise of electric mobility. As more areas gain stable electricity, more people can charge their vehicles at home or at community stations. Combined with low-cost charging just 200 CFA or 36 cents per full charge, this creates a sustainable and scalable ecosystem. The government's symbolic adoption of electric vehicles at the ministerial level, such as the deployment of 53 electric cars, valued at nearly 1.8 million yuan, dollars is another sign of top-down commitment.
But the real change is coming from the bottom up from workshops, from writers, from the streets. President Ibrahim Traoré has been vocal in supporting local production and energy independence. His speeches often emphasize that Africa must develop with its own tools, its own talent, and its own values. The electric P-50 fits this ethos. It is not a Western import. It is a homegrown response to global problems. This is what makes the Burkina Bay model so powerful. It is not just fighting pollution. It is building pride, resilience, and a new kind of African environmentalism, one that is born in neighborhoods, not in conference rooms. And in this green revolution, every ride counts. Western media often presents innovation in Africa with a subtle but persistent skepticism. Headlines frame local efforts as symbolic, limited in scale, or not economically viable. The transformation of Burkina Faso's P-50 motorbikes into electric vehicles has not been spared. Critics claim it is nothing more than a PR gesture, a temporary fix in a country without the infrastructure to support real change. But those narratives are not just misleading, they are wrong. The electric P-50 project is not a glossy prototype for foreign investors. It is a grassroots engineering solution, built by local technicians using recycled materials and tailored to the economic and environmental needs of Burkina Faso. These are not showroom bikes. They are workhorses for farmers, traders, and families who need reliable transport every day. Let us address the four most common misconceptions. First, Africa only consumes technology. It does not create it. This myth ignores the reality that the electric P-50 is a locally imagined and locally executed innovation. It was not imported. It was reinvented. Amidou Abouré and his peers are not waiting for technology transfers. They are creating technology suited to their streets, their people, and their problems. Second, electric vehicles are just a government showpiece. In reality, Hundreds of riders now use electric motorbikes for daily commuting. These conversions are not being paraded at international expos. They are being ridden to work, to school, and to the market. The cost savings are real. The environmental benefits are measurable. Third, there is no infrastructure to support EVs in Africa. While it is true that Burkina Faso's electricity grid is limited in rural areas, the government has committed over 1 billion U.S. dollars to expand access. Solar energy is filling the gaps. Community charging stations and decentralized energy sources are already making electric mobility possible in towns that once had no grid at all. Fourth, this initiative is not tied to national development. On the contrary, the electric P-50 aligns directly with the political philosophy of President Ibrahim Traoré. His call for technological sovereignty is being answered by mechanics and innovators across the country. The project is not isolated. It is part of a larger movement toward self-reliance and economic independence. As we close this story, let us return to the image we began with a dusty road, a quiet ride, and a nation on the move. The electric P-50 is more than a machine. It is a symbol of what happens when people refuse to be defined by poverty or dependence. It is a reminder that innovation does not need a foreign logo or a billion-dollar investment. Sometimes, it just needs a worn-out frame, a spark of courage, and a leader who believes in the power of local hands. So, what does it mean for the rest of us? It means that Africa's next industrial revolution will not be televised. It will be built, repurposed, and quietly ridden through the streets, one battery at a time, one rider at a time. If this story moved you, share it, not because it is perfect, but because it is powerful. Every time we amplify a voice from Ouagadougou, we help rewrite the global narrative, one that no longer sees Africa as a continent of problems. But as a laboratory of solutions, Burkina Faso is not waiting for the world. It is already riding into the future.